Um, you know, I, I mean, I, my dad's a musician. My mother's a musician. Uh, so, you know, I come from a family of musicians and um, I've always just loved music and art. And um, that's just always been my thing. Uh, you know, and I, I remember I started playing music at a young age, you know, and uh, I kind of got out of it pretty quick because, you know, I, I went from someone that was like taking lessons from and I wanted to learn punk and metal and hardcore. And he was like, you got to learn the the scales. You got to learn this stuff first. You got to learn that first and all that bullshit. And it was, honestly, it's kind of boring for me. I was like, this is this. This is not fun, you know. I'm not having fun with this. I was like, this sucks, you know. <laughs> you know, and my dad was cool. He's like, I don't want to force you to do anything you don't want to do. You know, if you're not into it, you're not into it. You know, whatever. He was a musician, and um, he's he's been in bands all his life, you know. So I mean, yeah, you know, it, it was cool. It was just uh, I just wasn't having fun with it, you know. Um, uh, uh, until like uh, until like. Honestly, I went to like a, a, a first like hardcore punk show. My first show was Murphy's Law. You know, like the early to mid nineties, like that 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 changed my life forever. I'll never forget just standing in the back of the wetlands and just being like, "That's what I want to do with my life." You know, you had you had that one moment that just to, to just clicked with me. You know what I mean? And I just never, I, I'll I'll never ever forget that moment of just feeling that like just watching because I mean I've been to rock shows I've been to metal shows you know I mean you know concerts before but seeing a live hardcore band punk band like that it, it, it I mean it, it struck me so hard where I was just like holy fucking shit like I never, I never just felt like wow this is where I belong Whoa, this is me. This is what I'm about. This is this is incredible. The the energy, the um the music, the message, just it's just everything was just so incredible. And I was just like, this uh, I was like, I, this is what I want to do, you know? Like I, and I mean I I picked up the bass before as a young kid. I was a young metalhead, you know, and I, I was always into it, into the music and I wanted to play, but like I said, like taking lessons like kind of like suck the life out of it, you know? And I was like, this ain't cool, this ain't fun, you know? But once I, when I heard punk and hardcore and I seen it live, and I'm like, this is incredible. I want to do this again. And I never took a lesson ever since then. And I just learned how to play music by just being in bands and just, you know, trying to play this, trying to play that, trying to play, you know, punk band, Ramones, anything from, you know, punk rock to hardcore to, to whatever you know and then just being with bands the guys in the bands who are actually good musicians taught me how to play you know and i i, I still play so i, I would a lot of people are like oh i want you to give lessons to kids because because i would never want to teach a kid to play bass the way i play because the way i play <laughs> is just so not right you know but i mean i get the job done i, mean, I think i'm a pretty i'm pretty good at what i do you know what i mean but like I would never want to teach anybody to play that way because it's, it's so not right. But like, you know, like, I do good at it because I love it. I, I, have, a, I have a love for it. You know? So I taught myself a, a way to play. I don't know how. And, and other people in bands, like when I first joined they they were ready to kick me out. Like he's a nice, nice, like he's a nice kid. We like him, but he sucks. Like, he, he, you know, he's, he's not cutting it, you know? And I remember being on the road with um, TSOL. I think it was the casualties at the time. And um, it was Ron who was really fucking cool. I'll, ne I'll never forget him. He's a really fucking great guy from TSOL. And um, he was like, look, kid, we're going to get through this. You know what I mean? Like, he would, he would in between, you know, at shows, he would sit backstage at me and, and play with me and help me and show me some stuff. And, um, you know, Roger, of course, would help because he's a bass player as well. He would show me how to play stuff. And we're like, and they made it happen. You know, a couple... You know, a couple, couple shows, a couple more shows into it, uh, they were like, first of all, I was like on stage. I didn't have to play, but I'm jumping around like a maniac on stage. You're like, first of all, <laughs> stop moving. <laughs> like, you can't play yet. Like, you need to learn how to play. Then you can jump around. You know what I mean? Because I didn't know. I was like, I've been playing. 
I was playing like I was like a weekend warrior, you know. What I mean, I played shows on the weekends, and you know, I didn't play that good. I was uh, whatever, you know. But it took me a little time to just like, all right, learn how to play, sit down, play the bass right, and then I picked it up, and you know, and here I am, twenty something years later, I'm still in the band. So <laughs> it worked and out, the, you know. And I gotta say, there's. One comment actually that popped up on the feed here that I have to bring up, man, because this Please. guy seems like he's a huge fan. Uh, his name is uh, Kill74. He said, what's up, Mike? Huge uh, agnostic front fan from uh, Winnipeg, Canada. Getting an AF logo tattooed on me soon. Also picking up a guitar at 48 years old soon since I've been sober for 22 years. I just got to bring up, man, congratulations on the sobriety, man. That, that takes a lot of courage to go through that shit it and sure overcome does. it, man. So cheers 100%. to you. Cheers to you, brother. Keep playing. And also, man, prior to Agnostic Friend, you were actually a member of the hardcore band, hardcore and New York City band by the name of On the Rise. I was wondering if you can actually just tell us a bit more about a bit more bit more about that band. And of course, how did you actually get connected with the other members originally, man? Because you guys had some phenomenal material out. I appreciate that. That was that yeah, that was my first band. Um like I said, like at that time, we started on the rise in like '97. It was kind of around the time I started picking up the bass again, you know. And I was just like, yeah, I mean, I I, I didn't know how to play, or whatever, you know. But I was writing music before I even knew how to play the bass, you know. And I just, and I guess I just had such a love for it that um, it just, you know, I I, I don't know. It, it came, it poured out of me the music that you know. Like, I didn't even know how to fucking play. I didn't know how to play before I even got in the air. I still don't know how to play. <laughs> but I still, you know, get the job done. But, like, back then, I really didn't know how to play. And I think, and, and the funny thing is the way I learned how to write music was the fact that I didn't have a good ear. I would put on something I enjoyed listening to. Like, oh, I like this riff. I like that riff. And I'd be like, I want to try to rip this riff off. Kind of, you know? And because of the fact that I had no idea what I was doing or my earring, my ear wasn't good, I would try to write that kind of riff. But I, I didn't pick it up right, but, but I made it sound to my liking, you know, like this cadence or whatever, but it was on a different note or whatever. And I just, from there, just like kind of just put riffs together and just... I don't know how I did it. I don't know how I do it now. <laughs> I just do it, you know. It's just, it's just in me, you know. It just comes out of me. It's, just, it's a weird thing. But um, that's how I started writing. And uh, like I said, I, I, I didn't even know how to play the instrument. You know, it, it was weird. It's just, it's just, it was just something that was in me. You know, like even being in, in, in agnostic front is still insane to me because um, I started. So late, I even got into hardcore late. I didn't get to hardcore until like the mid '90s or whatever. You know, like, um, you know, I'm not an old school guy. I don't play it off like I am. Or try to be like I was. Uh, whatever, you know. I just, I just, I loved it. No matter what it was, you know, I was like, I don't give a fuck. I love the shit. Uh, and it's just, um, yeah, that's was weird. Like even trying to write music was just like so wild, like. It's like I listen to some of that stuff today, and, and I still think the music holds up. It's still great. Like I was writing that shit, I didn't know how to fucking play. My, even my brother was a drummer. He's a my brother's a great musician. I'm not a great musician. My brother was a fucking. He could play drums. He could play guitar. He could do anything. He's, he's like, I don't know how to fuck. He's like, you're writing good music. I was like, you think so? He's like, yeah, hey, it's fucking great. You know, I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, but he he can fucking play. He's like, I don't know how you're writing this stuff, but like. It's just, you know, you, if you love something that much, something good will come out of it. And I think that's, like, what I'm trying to get at, you know? And also, speaking of uh, uh, speaking of AF, man, and the, you actually joined that amazing band in the year 2000, where you actually became, of course, the bass player and also uh, backing vocals. I was wondering if you can actually just tell us a bit more about that. And, of course, how did you actually land that opportunity? Because, obviously, you know, Agnostic Front's been around since the year 1980, so yeah. they've, they've been around for so many years, man. Like, how did you actually get connected with the rest of the guys? That's a, good, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so, On The Rise, my first band that we just spoke about, uh, we did like a demo 
and we did it at like a, a little a little studio like somebody's underground basement where they recorded it. I mean, you know, and it sounded terrible. It was awful. So we were like, oh my God, this is, this sounds like shit, you know? Like whatever. So a friend of mine, uh, my, my buddy Renee, was in a band called Reach. Uh, he was like, why don't you go to the studio called Big Blue Meanie? We got this great work. He'll remaster it. It'll probably make it sound a little bit better. Yeah, we figured, why not? You know, let's go there. Let's do it. We we drove out there. We got so fucking lost. Couldn't find the place. We eventually find a place, like, four hours later, driving around Jersey. We get in there. The guy was like, we were like, we're so sorry. We're late, you know. And the guy was just so fucking cool. And actually, the guy named Tim Gills, who owned the studio, God rest his soul, he just passed away, like, a year or so ago. Just the man was just a wonderful man. And he's the reason why I'm in the Gnostic Front. That's why I'm going into this, you know. He was just such a great person. Uh, we got there. We were all flustered. We were like, we couldn't find the place. We're sorry. We were like fucking three, four hours late for the session, you know. <laughs> and the guy was just so cool. He's like, it's all good, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He came into the thing. He's like, all right, you guys. He, he took a liking to us, you know. Um, and... Um, it's like, you know, I'm having a holiday party. Agnostic Front's going to be there. They recorded there. Like, there was tons of bands that um, we, we met there. Oh, I'm trying to think of the other. El Nino. Uh, what, a lot of other bands that recorded there. It's like, we're having a Christmas party. I'm sure the AF guys are going to be there. Why don't you come and meet them? Come hang out, you know? And um, we met the AF guys. And, of course, all of us were just like, oh, my God. Yeah, you know, yeah, we were excited. You know what I mean? Like immediately mean, agnostic front. For us it was a big fucking deal. Like, you know, like to us you know, agnostic front, they were gods to us, you know what I mean? Like, you know? Uh and just hanging out and meeting them. We wound up taking the old drum home, Jimmy Coletti, and um we just became friends with the guys. Just just because we'd seen them at all the shows and we wound up hanging out. We became friends with them, you know. And, and like a year later I remember the the um the first bass player, Rob Kabula. So we were at, I was at Lemoore's at a show, and he was like, hey, look, you know, I got a great job. I've been doing this all my life. I'm done. You know, he's like, I, I'm, I can't tour anymore. I can't do it anymore. You want to take my place? And I'm like, hey, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> yeah, okay. Let me see what I'm doing for the rest of my life. You know, like, yeah, of course. You know, and then um, I think like a month or two later, I got a phone call. Hey, you want to come try out the AF, blah, blah, blah. Try it out with another guy. It completely blew me away. Like I said, I, I couldn't really play at the time, you know? And um, I remember we played a couple songs. The other guy played a couple of songs. The old drummer, Jimmy Coletti, he's like, yeah, come on, you know, come take a walk. Let's go get some beers, you know? I'm like, here we go. Here comes the letdown, you know what I mean? And he comes out, he comes out of the studio, he goes, you're in, kid. I was like, I'm in. I was like, I'm like, really? Like, wow. I'm like, you, I'm like, I was like, man, I, I was surprised. I was shocked. I was like, man, that guy kind of blew me away. He, and Jimmy was like, man, you're fucking horrible. He goes, you're one of us. He goes, you're in, in space guitar. You'll fucking learn. You'll figure it out. <laughs> and that's the truth. That's how it happened. You know, that's how the whole thing went down, you know. And uh, that's really the, um, that's the whole story behind it. Which is pretty funny. And when you said a few moments ago about how you got lost and whatnot, man, I know a lot of the listeners are probably, they might not know exactly what era this is from. A lot of people are probably thinking, oh, why didn't he just pull out his GPS? Back then, there was none of that. You had to pull out a big ass freaking map you bought at a gas station, and oh, yeah. you miss one wrong turn, you're screwed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was 20 something years ago, which is not that long ago, but you know, like that was, that was when I first buckled down and got a phone. At that time, I was like, all right. I was trying to hold out. I was like, I'm not going to have a, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to have a phone or whatever. But, like, at that time, I was like, all right, I'm in this van now. They're going to have to get in touch with me or whatever. Like, I'm, I finally buckled down. I got a phone. Like, you know, uh, that was, like, 2001. And, you know, I mean, you can't even live without that. You can't even live without a phone these days. It's, like, unheard of, you know? And also, as well, in 2002, Agnostic Front actually appeared in uh, Matthew Barney's film, uh, Cree Master 3. I was wondering if you can actually tell us a bit more about that opportunity. And of course, what was it like just being on the set of that particular film? Because I do know, going back a few moments ago with Murphy's Law, it's almost like 
the ripple effect. They got you into the music, and now you got to share the movie set with this particular band. Yeah, but you know, to be honest with you, that was before they filmed that before I was in the band. So I oh, I, I actually wasn't in that. I, I yeah. actually did not. I did not know they actually filmed that previously. Yeah, and I, they, yeah. I guess it was. I guess it was released at that time because. I remember when it came out, you know, I remember seeing it and meeting Matthew Barney and, um, but I, I had took over at that time and Rob was, but Rob was in the movie. I actually wasn't in that movie. I wish I would have been, but you know, that was, that was. That, that, that would have been a really, that would have been a cryptic moment for you as well. Like if you were in the movie, it would have been a full, like full 360 from the beginning right to your current point Especially of your career. the art stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> without, without a fucking doubt. But, you know, I, I, I wasn't part of that, obviously, you know. I, I was before me. I was right before me. Hey, like, even for interviewers like myself that does research, man, you learn something new every day. Because I actually did not know that that was actually filmed previously to you joining Agnostic Front. Yep. Absolutely. Totally. Without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, you know, that was a really cool thing. I remember when that came out. It was like, it was really cool, you know? Oh, uh, but um, yeah, unfortunately, I was I was not I was not part of that, which was was actually a really awesome thing. Have you seen the movie? I I seen it years ago. Like we're talking about a good like ten fifteen years ago. It's been a it's actually really hard to find now. Honestly, man. Like I I I, I last time I watched it, I rented it from an old video store before they went out of business. Sure. Now it's like so hard to find it. I need what I need to do is go on one of those. Uh, uh, download uh, one of those free movie sites and actually type it in because some of those sites, man, they have everything. Yeah, absolutely. That was really cool. It was a pretty cool thing. Um, it was a pretty interesting film. I think a lot of it was like silent. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was pretty. You know, actually, for a music art thing, the being silent was pretty. You know, it was, it was interesting. You know, um, definitely. I mean, I haven't seen it in years. I haven't seen it in a long time. But Matthew Barney was a pretty um. You know, he's he's done some pretty cool shit in his time. Because I remember here in Canada, we had a we had a video store that was pretty much like the Canadian version of Blockbuster. They were all over <laughs> Canada here in Canada called Jumbo Video. And I remember coming across that movie on the shelf at Jumbo Video. And I think it was like the last, second or last year before they even closed. And I remember not even knowing what it was at that current time. I rented it and I saw the silent aspect of the movie. And I was like, this is actually pretty kick ass for a silent film. Absolutely. Very cool. And also as well, just jumping, jumping ahead of the timeline a little bit, winter of 2009, AF actually traveled uh, overseas to actually participate in the Persistence Tour. From what you actually can recall about that tour, can you tell us a bit more about uh, that particular year? And of course, what was the atmosphere like over there in the United Kingdom just playing for that crowd? Because I've heard when it comes to just music in general, they go absolutely insane at live events. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, Totally. You know, I mean, I feel like over the past 10 to 15 years, um, Europe's got a little spoiled, like almost like America. You know what I mean? It's, yes. like, uh, it's like a lot of bands just travel there now, uh, which is amazing. Uh, but I mean, at that time, I mean, I mean, for me, just being into it, like, I guess I was in the band around, around nine years around that time. I mean, Europe's got such a great, a great scene, you know? You know, I mean, I feel like they are a little more loyal. I feel like if you got a fan over there, you have a fan kind of for life, where, like, it's over here, things are a little more whatever's hot at the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's like, I, I just feel like them, they're a little more open-minded to just, not only just music, just like everything, you know what I mean? Like, um, even like, I, I, I don't want to talk sexually, but I mean like, uh, even like, I, I mean like, even if you go on like the UK page, they have like a page nine girl where the girl's like naked and, you know, and it's not like a big deal. You know what I mean? So I'm like, it's like, it's like, you know, or over here, it's like, oh, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? It's like a little more forbidden, you know, like, things yeah. are a little, um, a 
looser with stuff like that over there. Um, but like they just, I don't know. Like I mean, going to Europe is 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 is, is an incredible opportunity. You know what I mean, like we have friends everywhere from like London to fucking Austria to Japan to everywhere. It's just um, they got a real love for it. You know what I mean? Like, whereas I feel like America is just very, they're a little more trendier. They're a little more like what's cooler at the moment. You know what I mean? I just, I just feel they're a little more diehard fans. But yeah, like you could go over there in Europe, like you do a festival with like, you know, you got, you got one side, one, one side of the tent's got a hardcore. The other side has like fucking techno or whatever. The other side's got punk. The other side's got metal. The other side's got pop. You know what I mean? And all the kids kind of enjoy it all. You know what I mean? It's like, well, you could do a festival like that, you know? I don't think as many, I don't think festivals like that would do as well here in America. You know what I mean? Where I just don't think people are as open-minded to that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Which is kind of, you know, you see what goes on. Like, you don't see festivals like that over here. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. And when you kind of get something like that, you see people complaining, being like, that's not a rock festival. It's having this and that. Like, yeah. I see the complaints, but in the UK tours, you see you see the comments from the UK people. They're they're loving it. They're just all over it. Like like a fat kid in a yeah. candy store. They want it all. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I mean, I have a friend of mine who's like, as a kid girl, I would go to clubs, all, all, these, all these clubs, drug clubs and in, in the city and like sound factory and all that shit. I never liked the music. I always thought it sucked. You know what I mean? But I love, I love the drugs. I love going hanging out and having fun, you know? I go and enjoy myself. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? But I never really, I'll be honest with you, I never got into music. There might have been like a song or two that I was like, pretty cool, pretty catchy, whatever. I just was never into that music, you know? But I had friends that were, you know? And um, it was like, I remember I, I, I was on, I forget where we were playing because I don't remember anything. Whoever. I was on a plane <laughs> to Europe, and um, I was on the plane. I was sitting next to a, a, a really big DJ. I think his name was Carl Cox. He was, he was like a big yeah. techno DJ or whatever. You know what I mean? I was, and um, I got off the plane. I was texting my buddy, who who was actually into hardcore, and, and he was into you know all the club music as well too. He liked all that stuff too. You know, he was into all that. And I was texting him. I was, I was like, man, I was like, I was sitting next to Carl. He's a DJ, Carl Cox. You know, the guy's like, oh my god, he's like one of the biggest techno DJs of of, of the era. And he's like, you know, I was like, yeah. I was like, I don't know who the fuck this guy is. He didn't know who the fuck I was either. <laughs> we were hanging out, talking bullshit, cool guy. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I don't know what he was about. You know what I was about? But whatever. We played the same festival. And I just remember that festival being really incredible. Just like hanging out. We played. And later in the night, I, I went to see that guy DJ. I mean, he was rocking the crowd. I mean, I don't know, whatever music he was playing, like, whatever. But, like, it, it was kind of cool, you know what I mean? Like, you know, my friend was like, holy shit, you hanging out with that dude? And I was like, yeah, you know, like, I don't know. You know, like, it, it was fucking awesome. It was really cool, you know. But I, I enjoy shit like that, you know. Like, er, like you know, like, can you imagine if everybody listened to all the same music or if everybody had the same opinions, how fucking boring this world would be? You know what I mean? but yeah, I, still, I, I definitely but agree on that. But yeah, we still fight about everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's just like, it's, it's crazy. Hey, it's just, in my honest opinion, it's just human nature. You know what I mean? That's what makes us humans, our emotions, you know, our feelings. <laughs> 100%. You know, everybody thinks differently and everybody should have, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Whether they're wrong or right, you know, it's one thing, whatever, you know. You could be the judge of that or whatever, but, you know, you kind of have to respect you know, it, whether you agree or disagree, like, everybody has their own opinions. And, like, there's always a million different ways to look at stuff. You know what I mean? You can't, you know, anybody can just go into looking at something one way and being like, this is it. But, like, no, there's, there's, a, there's not everything so black and white. You know what I mean? It's just, you know what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Just, oh, yeah. I, def I definitely hear you. You know? But also with as well, man, in 2011, you actually did production work on the uh, Dead Tricks EP titled You Should Have Worried About It. I was wondering if you can actually tell us a bit more about that opportunity. And, of course, what was it like just actually working behind the scenes with this particular band and, of course, on this on this amazing album? 
You know, um, like I said, it's funny because I actually mentioned my buddy Renee from the band Reach. He was just friends with those guys. And um, I guess he recommended me to those guys. I've never done any production work. I just, I, you know, I mean, I've, I've been writing music for a while and stuff. And, you know, and, you know um, I was like, sure, let me hear your stuff. Let me hear what you got. And I, I just listened to their music and just kind of was like, all right, maybe this may need this, this may need that, that need that. You know, and, and I and I gave the, my insight on, on to what I felt they should do to make the songs better. And they loved it. And they were cool with it. They loved it, you know. And um, I just went to the studio with them and, and you know, kind of helped them out with some stuff and gave them a little insight on what I thought would sound better and what I thought would... Because I'm, I'm the producer by any means. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, can, I, I wrote a pretty good... I wrote a couple of pretty good songs in my time, but, you know... That's about it. I'm I'm not producer, you know. I'm not Mutt Lang or um, <laughs> you know, uh, but you know, whatever. I guess it worked out. They were happy with what I brought to the table with them, and um, that's a cool experience. I'm still friends with those guys, you know. And then, this obviously just working on this particular project with the Dead Tricks. Yeah, in the in the in the future, if anybody ever came to you and was like, hey, you know, I want. I want you on production for this record. Would you do it, or is that just, or is that just a one-time thing for yourself, Mike Gallo? Uh, you know, I, I, I definitely would. I, I had somebody recently that asked me to do something like that, um, and I just, I just didn't have the time at the time to do it. You know, but um, yeah, I mean, somebody came at me and was just like, "Hey, I love your style. I love your." the way you do whatever you know like i i would try to if you know if, if i would definitely try to help people i mean why not you know i mean i love music um i definitely would without a doubt and also as well on november 8th of 2019 uh af actually released the amazing record uh, titled get loud i was wondering if you could actually tell us a bit more about this project and of course can we act uh where can we actually buy or stream ourselves a copy of it today because i gotta say get loud is probably one of my favorite af projects that you guys actually released in a long time oh cool um yeah that was just the uh that record i mean it was just a good collaboration of um me and the band writing music. Actually, my brother, Steve, who was in the band for a while, me and him were writing some stuff together. Um, he helped me out with some stuff, and um, Steve's a great writer. Uh, uh, so he helped, he helped us out with some stuff. Uh, but most of that, you know, was with the band, just putting our ideas together. You know, like I said, Steve helped out a lot with a few songs, a few, you know, Definitely not everything, but um, yeah, you know, he, you know, he, he got involved with with it a little bit, and um, but yeah, it was just pretty much. Uh, I mean, just like with the last few records, it's pretty much just a band effort. You know, all of us putting our ideas together, and you know, me, Craig, just Vinny, Roger, you know, all of us just kind of putting our ideas together, and uh, that's what came out out of it. You know, I mean, uh. I think, and, and it's, so I'd be honest with you, Get Loud for me is a great fucking record. I love it. I still listen to it to this day. And, and you know, and it's like, I feel like it sucked because of the pandemic just, we released it in the pandemic hit. And it just, you know, it, we didn't get to tour for it. We didn't get to, um, it's a shame, you know. I really, I hope, I hope it's, it's, you know, I hope it doesn't become like a lost record because uh... I ended up uh, purchasing a CD copy off your guys' website when it first dropped, and I can actually say that this CD is actually still in uh, record stores. I, I know down here in Canada because I was at a record store about uh, three days ago in Ottawa, Ontario, and they actually had a few copies of Get Loud actually in, in brand new in their stock, man. So it's definitely getting sold at record stores down here in Canada. I can tell you that. I can tell yeah, you that much. That's cool. You know, we, we, did, um, we, did, we did a few shows over in Canada. I ho I'm hoping we can be able to come back. I heard they made things a lot harder since COVID, you know, but I'm sure things eventually will open up and, 
just like everything, you know what I mean? You know, COVID fucked the world for a little while, and then, um, you know, things will, things will get more lenient, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll be back. I hope, I hope so. I mean, I like playing Canada. I hope nice. so as well, because uh, <laughs> it sounds bad to say Arcadian border service, man. Excuse my language, but we're fucked over here, man. Like, it's so hard to get through the border. It's it's, it's ridiculous. Nice. And it, it, that, that makes a lot of bands not even want to bother with Canada, because they, they have to do the hassle, right? So they go overseas. Meanwhile, us Canadian fans are sitting there with their arm, arms crossed being like, really? <laughs> right? I but, know it's tough, you know? And Canada's a fucking great place. It really is. You know what I mean? Like, you go there and just like, uh, I remember, uh, I remember a cop pulling us over just to make sure our tire was on right. You know what I mean? Like, like oh, wow. What a nice guy. You know what I mean? Like, I just, we were like, oh, fuck. What's going on? I just pulling you guys over just to make sure your tire was like, so, I, I don't know, something weird like that. But he was so nice. And he was just like, oh, wow. <laughs> I wish your cops were like that, you know? Like, <laughs> I, if you don't be asking, well, what part of Canada was that? Was that way up north, or was that like in Ontario or uh, Quebec or something? Question. I don't remember. It was a really long time ago. I, I don't remember. But they were really <laughs> fucking cool. We were like, all right, and we wish your cops were like that. You know, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to say, you, de you, sure you we definitely got okay. a good one there, Mike. I think we had, I gotta I think say. We had a trailer. We were with a van and trailer, and he was like make, making sure like everything was good and so yeah, and we were like, "Oh shit, the guy!" They're just pulling us over just to look out, like. <laughs> <how nice he's... laughs> I gotta say, so nice. You definitely got lucky because I know down here in Canada, sometimes some of some of the police officers they're uh, they're pretty ruthless to say the least. Really? But it's, I'm good. To, I'm glad that you got pulled over by a nice one. That's uh, yeah, that, that, that's it's always good. Experience, you know, like you know, not all bad. Not all cops are bastards, you know. But I have to ask, because obviously, you know, the, the, this year is still young. We're just at, we're just at, at getting to the end of March. What is next for yourself and Agnostic Front? Like, is there anything we missed during this interview? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote? Well, we still got you here live on uh, Punk World Radio FM's Instagram Live. I mean, just like, you know, like, we're, we are, I mean, like, Agnostic Front has been a band since 82. I've been in a band for 20-something years. Like, we're not stopping. This is our lives. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure we'll eventually put another record out. Um, we're going to tour every fucking year until we drop dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that's the fucking reality. You know what I mean? Like, Vinny's, I mean, like, Roger's, like, I'm, I'm 48. I think Roger's 58. Stigma's, like, like 68. You know, I think we're all like, we all like 10 years, but like, you know, like, like this, this is our lives. Like, you know, like we're going to do this till we fucking drop dead. And like, why the fuck not? Like these guys have put in the hard work and then they paid the way for, I mean, forget, forget about myself. I'm talking about Vinny and Raj. Like these, these guys have been doing this since like the early eighties and like, you know, like they've influenced so many bands, you know what I mean? And like, I don't, like, it's their life. They love it. They, they'll never stop doing it. And why should they? You know what I mean? Like, they, you know, like, so like, from us, we'll never stop. Like, like you know, there's a lot of bands. Like, I, I don't want to hate on the whole, eh, it's just, I just hate when bands break up and then they come back and it's just like a big fucking deal. Like, you know, like, that's cool. Like, I get it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's just like, it's like, shut the fuck up and play. If you're going to take a little time off, take a little fucking time off. Or, uh, and I'm not hating on any bands. So I'm really not, because I don't want to come off like I'm sounding like a dick. Yeah, but you got valid points, Mike. I agree with you all the you way, man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's cool, and I get it. Look, being in a band is, is not as easy as people think. You know, people have lies. People have, you know, uh, you know, people think that we make so much fucking money during it. We don't make shit. People are like, oh, you guys are an AF, you have tour buses, you're rich. Are you fucking, like, out of your mind? Like, I'm still struggling to pay my bills every fucking month. Like, worrying, you know, hopefully I, especially with my art, like, I hope I sell enough stuff. I hope, you know, like, like we don't make a lot of fucking money. Like, it's, it's you know, I mean, it's because we have tour buses because all the money goes to those tour buses. You know, like, we don't make shit. 
You know what I mean? Like, it's not easy being in a band, but like, I don't know. I, you get jaded after the years. You know what I mean? Like, doing this for all these years, and you get jaded. You know, it's I just it's I hate to just like see these bands like it's just it's, it's annoying. You know, but that's why and the only time AF has ever broken up was when Roz is in prison. You know, they came back and like you're just still doing. You know, just keep fucking doing. You know what I mean? Like he came back, back kicked ass like he was never even gone, man. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and it's just like parents, parents that that uh, you know they're like, oh, we can't have kids. Keep fucking. It'll eventually ha happen. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> eventually it's gonna happen. I have friends of mine that like, and it's like they they've tried for years. They didn't have a kid. You know what I mean? Like. And they said, fuck it, we're going to adopt a child, you know? They adopted this beautiful child. A month later, she got pregnant. <laughs> she got, <laughs> just keep fucking. Eventually, it's going to happen, you know? Like, it's crazy. But, you know, the, the, the body works very funny. You, know, you, never, you never know. Like, I feel like with women, sometimes, like, I think, like, oh, eh, don't get me wrong, I'm not dissing on them or anything. I'm just saying, like, I think sometimes if, like, you're trying too hard for something, like something inside is not letting it happen, you know what I mean? And then when you let go of the, the worry or whatever, boom, it just happens, you know what I mean? Like the body works pretty funny, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's wild. It's um I, I def definitely I, I definitely like that man, and it's just the analogy, man, is absolutely perfect. But hey, they 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 have not one but two bundles of joy to take care of now. So oh, yeah. it is what it is. Life I mean, life is hey. a funny thing. I mean, hey, look, you know, you know, I, I'm, you know, the, the the woman's body is 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 a different thing. You know what I mean? Like, look at look what they look what they do. You know what I mean? I, that's why I always love and respect women. I mean, man, they're spitting babies out of their chin. You know what I mean? Like, yo, they're a lot more <laughs> superior than us. You know what I mean? Like, that's a wild shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, that's why I've always been, you know. I always have a lot of respect for women, you know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, it's like they're, they're, they're different than us, you know? We're different from them. We're different from us. I mean, I, I like to say we're equal, but I don't think we really are, you know what I mean? Like, they're different from us, you know? We all should be treated equal, absolutely, 1 million percent. I'm all for that, you know? But, you know, we're all different. We're all different. We all, we, we're, we, we're all different from each other. That doesn't mean we shouldn't treat each other the same you know what i mean and also mike obviously you know individuals that are watching here on instagram they know how to find you on instagram clearly because they're watching right now but for the individuals that don't have you on other social media platforms before we part ways this evening how can they actually follow you aside from instagram like everywhere else like facebook twitter all the other fun stuff and keep track of what yourself and agnostic front currently has going on i mean i mean if if I have two different pages. I have um, Mike Gallo, 1975, and I have Gallo underscores originals, which is like my art thing, which is, um, I should keep up with a little bit more. Um, of course, there's a, the Agnostic Front page. There's the Stigma page. Uh, I have a TikTok page, which is the same as my Instagram. Um, I should really be a little bit more involved in, the social media game, uh, and I, I, I try, I really do. There's so many times where I'm like, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna do three posts a morning, and you know the whole algorithms. It, it's rough, you know. It, it's it, it's a fucking job. It's a job keeping up with that. You know what I mean? It really is. It's a lot, you know. But you can find me on, um, you know, my. Gallo, 1975, Gallo Originals, um, Agnostic Front, New York Hardcore. Uh, um, yeah, that's where you can find me, you know. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not hard to find, you know. Well, you, and like I gotta you, say, you got a problem with me? I'm not hard to find. Exactly. <laughs> Especially with the internet, man. You just type in Mike Gallo and yeah. boom. Yeah. Right then and there. You can find yeah. you, you know what I mean? You know, I got my, I got, um, I mean, if you go on, on my Instagram, I have my web page on there where I sell a lot of products and like very like New York hardcore inspired stuff and um, just a lot of stuff off, off of um, my art stuff, you know. 
But um, yeah, I'm not too hard to find if you want to find me. <laughs> Hit me up. And I gotta say. I got to say, first and foremost, Mike, before we part ways this evening, man, I've been a huge Agnostic Front fan for so many years, man. And just being able to interview you and just talk, talk about your amazing career within the music industry, man, has been such an honor for me this evening. So thank you so much for years of amazing music. I'm definitely looking forward to many more years. But as of right now, thank you so much for your time, man. It was such a tremendous honor. No, thank you so much. I mean, thank you for wanting to interview me. and Thank you for... You know, it's, it's it's great that people actually give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, that makes me feel good. And, you know what I mean? Like, it's amazing. You know, I mean, I'm not in this for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it, a lot, like, so many people that, like, come up to me and just been like, you changed my life forever. You know what I mean? Like, your music, your words, your lyrics have, like, inspired me and helped me to get through life. Like, like to hear stuff like that, like, people are like, what, what makes you keep doing that? Stuff like that. Traveling around the world and hearing stuff like that is just like, it's like, wow, I feel like that actually made a difference. I actually touched someone. I actually made somebody feel better. That's what keeps to me thriving to keep doing this. You know what I mean? Like, it's pretty amazing. It's, it's, it's you know, uh, I, I'm pretty fucking lucky. I'm pretty much lucky to meet the guys that I did at the time that I did. And, you know, sometimes luck is, you know, you got to be in the right place at the right time. And I think, and, and, and be honest with you, I'm going to say one thing before I leave, and I hope this resonates with everybody, is that, like, I try to tell my daughter, I try to tell anybody that I ever talk to, it's just like, if you really want to succeed in anything, you have to put your absolute everything into it. You have to put your 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 love, your honor. You have to put yourself, and that's that's why I was joined to. That's why I was asked to join AF, because those guys saw how much I loved, and so much I was into it. They saw it. They, they knew it. You know what I mean? Like they were like, "This is the guy." They 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 kind of handpicked me because they were like, "This guy, you know." I mean, you know, and attitude is everything, you know what I mean? You, you know, you need to be, sometimes you need to be easygoing, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people, they don't last in bands because you want to know why. Like, I don't give a fuck how great of a musician you are. Like, um, you need to learn how to deal with people in life, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, that's why like, some people homeschool their kids and shit. Like, I don't think that that's a good idea. You need to be out in the world. You need to learn how to be social, learn how to work with people. And that is like so important in life. You know what I mean? That's what helped me get through life. That's what helped me get in this band and helped me be in this band for 20 something years because it's like, you know, you need that. Um, you need, you, you need that to get, to get by in life. Like if you're going to do anything, you have to put a million percent into it. If you really want to be that, if you want to do that, if you want to be an artist, if you want to be a musician, you have to put your fucking everything into it. Otherwise, don't fucking bother. But if you're going to put your fucking everything into it, you will succeed. You will. I mean, a fucking moron like myself has. <laughs> you know what I mean? Here I am. You know what I mean? I'm not the sharpest crayon in the box, but you know what? I got more heart than fucking anyone in the world. And... If, if, if you know that's that's everything you know what i mean you need to just put your fucking everything into it it really is it really makes you know you you can't half-ass anything because you'll get nowhere if you really want to succeed you got to put your all into it and never give up as well never nope. never no. give up. even if you fail <laughs> we all fail i fail every fucking day of my life you know what i mean that doesn't mean you're not going to succeed you know, you need to never stop, but just keep it going. You know, that's it. It's like the best advice I can really give to anyone. That's what I give to my daughter every day. It's what, you know. And I got to say, first and foremost, Mike, again, thank you so much for your time this evening. Just be able to talk with me. 
and the rest of our viewers. I'm going to be airing this on the radio station airwaves actually sure. uh, tomorrow evening at the exact same time. That way I can make sure it actually reaches the people as well. And I'm going to be posting this on our YouTube as well since the StreamYard link didn't work. But again, thank you so much. My apologies on the inconvenience with the StreamYard no, as well. I, I think that might have to do with like, something on my internet. Like, like I, got, I, got, I got it on my phone, but I couldn't get it on my iPad. I wasn't sure why. I was like, I was like freaking out. I was like, this sucks. You know, I came home in time to make sure everything went through. And uh, it, it just, it, it still is not downloading on my iPad. You know, these things weren't crazy. You know, technology's nuts. So I'm glad we were able to yes. do it like this. I, I apologize for the inconvenience. Oh, no, no need to apologize me personally i've been in the radio industry for about five years i just started doing the whole video thing a few months ago so i'm still learning as i go on this aspect as well man so trust me no need to apologize because i know i probably i'm probably going to be apologizing to a lot of artists coming up myself so thank you so much again mike and i'm pretty sure we definitely shall talk again here soon man but for now definitely have yourself a phenomenal sunday night sure. you too thanks brother have a good night you as well thank you take care